all right so last we were about to introduce tensors and we were discussing about the transformation of coordinates and uh, so let me just uh, recall before introducing tensors formally so we have seen that uh, we established this notation that if I have two coordinate systems, uh, let's take one system uh, as xi, the other one I'm denoting by x bar i, then uh, if these are two coordinate systems for space time, then I can switch between these two using uh, a transformation of coordinates and uh, that thing we were labeling as f. So let me say that given xi, I'm able to produce x bar uh, through this map f. So that just means that every component of the system, uh, every component of the system is a function of this. And uh, we uh, also impose a condition that f is invertible. So thereby I can come from here to here using uh, the inverse transformation f inverse. So let me write this thing over here. We will be using it today. So this just means that xi, uh, xi bar, so this thing is just a function of, uh, of xi coordinates. So that means this is function of x1, x2, and so on up till xn, where n denotes the dimension of space. And uh, since we are using our notation uh, for space time, as x0, x1, x2, and x3. So I can switch over to this notation that will be better. Let me use uh, that notation consist to retain consistency. So I will take this to be running from x0 to x3. So oh, these are in total four functions. So these are four functions. I runs from 0 to 3. And uh, uh, let's uh, give a name to this uh, function because I'm uh, calling the vector function as f then uh, this ith component of that vector function under our notation uh, let's just call it fi so so that means f under this notation is just f1 f0 f1 f2 f3 it has its four components oops f3 Right, so this is transformation, it's invertible. This thing is invertible, so we also have f inverse, and uh, that also has four components that brings in this coordinate system to this. So this is how we switch between coordinate systems for space-time. And uh, so now we are about to introduce tensors. So the very first thing that uh, we need to talk about is scalars formally we also call them invariants and as the name suggests they don't transform they don't change when we switch between coordinate systems so i have this coordinate system i choose this one or this one doesn't matter the value of scalar will remain same so these are the simplest kind of tensors so let me write it formally over here so uh, let's say there's an object phi uh, that will be called scalar so phi is a function of coordinates so phi is a function which depends on these things x2 and x3 but the value of phi does not depend on the choice of coordinate system so if we transform So let me write definition over here. So this phi, it is, it will be called a scalar or an invariant if its original value that does not change upon the transformation of coordinate system from xi to xi bar. So that just means that on transformation, let's say on transformation phi changes to xi of x bar 0, x bar 1, x bar 2, x bar 3, then uh, these values, they are same, they are equal. 
so that's why they are called invariants and uh, so these things they are simplest kind of tenses they are called tenses of order or rank zero right so these are uh, the simplest kind of objects then uh, let's define this function it can also be taken as a tensor so it's it will be commonly used so it's Kronecker Delta tensor we can take it as an example so how do we define this so I'm defining this with symbol Delta and Delta J I so I'm going to use two indices for it j and i one upper and lower we'll understand how what is meant by these positions upper and lower positions in a second so but the definition is uh, the delta j i it will be zero uh, whenever j is not equal to i or it will be one if j is i so this function is called Kronecker delta and uh, immediately we can uh, see certain properties arising from it so I, I, I can uh, define this Kronecker Delta in several ways so let me put it here I can also take instead of this as Delta IJ so technically these two are not same objects but the definition is same uh, the output is same this will give 0 when j is not equal to i, 1 when j is not equal, j, j is equal to i. And uh, similarly, I can also go for uh, delta ij. So technically, they are different. We'll understand in a moment. But uh, the definition is same. The outputs will be same. So we can uh, talk about the simple algebraic properties arising from these things. So uh, let's say I want, so let me just uh, run my indices i and j uh, to keep things simple at this point from one, from one to three. Let's take a space from one to three instead of zero to three for space time. So uh, let's say delta three j and I'm multiplying it with delta two j. So there is a difference. These are two different objects. The definition is same but here indices are appearing at the bottom and here it is one up one down so what kind of object this will be when i take product of this so under einstein's notation we understand that whenever uh, an index appears uh, at up and down position then a summation is going to take place so this uh, means that this summation is hidden and summation is going to take place over j so if i write all the terms i'm going to get del 3 1 del 1 2 del 3 2 del 2 2 and del 3 3 and del 3 2 but the thing over here is that uh, our definition says that whenever j is not equal to i it's going, that is going to result in zero so this object is zero here this object is zero although this is one uh, this is one but this is zero so that means it just amounts to zero there's nothing in this product so this is just zero so here we are just taking some instances to uh, to look at how these summations products work in terms of these uh, simple objects so chronic delta is a very simple kind of tensor actually we have defined three different tensors as chronic deltas so these two objects they are different and uh, uh, let's uh, define that I, I, I'm going to define that in a few seconds so so let's uh, get on, on to that so the first category that uh, we are defining they are first interesting category uh, is uh, contravariant tensors or vectors it doesn't matter because contravariant tensors uh, order one so that's what I'm going to define over here so what is this so I have a, a vector a here we are talking about order one so I have a vector and this a has components a1 a2 so I'm going to use again space-time notation or just for simplicity let me just uh, take one two three 
uh, that will make writing easy but uh, when we'll talk about space time for the physics then uh, it will have four components a0 a1 a2 a3 so let's quickly discuss these things uh, uh, with this thing with this notation a1 a2 a3 so this is a vector a is a vector and uh, what kind of vector is it so these ai's they are functions of the coordinate system uh, and uh, let me choose fix a coordinate system let me choose two coordinate systems one xi and the other one i'm denoting by x bar i so these are my two coordinate systems so ai's are functions of xi's so it depends on x1 x2 x3 uh, this happens for every i and similarly a bar because this vector also has its representation in this coordinate system so there a bar i it's also function of uh, x bar 1 x bar 2 x bar 3 again uh, uh, the point here is that if i am considering four dimensional space time then i will put one more code component here x x bar 0 uh, but uh, anyhow the working is same uh, that uh, dimension of space doesn't matter in this case at least for now so uh, i have two kind of representation of this object uh, in two coordinate systems so it will be called contravariant so this thing will be called contravariant here comes the definition so it will be called in contravariant it is contravariant if the relationship between a bar ith component of a bar and uh, let me take it aj over here so the relationship between uh, the ith component in this coordinate system the new coordinate system this i will treat as new coordinate system this one as old coordinate system so the ith component of this object in the new coordinate system uh, it's given by this formula it's given by this expression del x bar i del xj so there is a summation going on over here we understand that summation j goes from one to three in this case for space time it will go from 0 to 3 and we understand the Einstein's notation I don't need to write this thing because uh, this J is appearing at up and down position so the summation is understood under Einstein's notation so I'm just going to write this so this is my definition for contravariant tensor if this matrix if this thing this object is involved uh, so these are partial derivatives of new coordinate system with respect to old and uh, if these uh, terms are involved these partial derivatives are involved to convert this object into this then it is called contravariant so this comes as the definition and it's contravariant tensor of order one so this order comes from uh, how many times this is going to appear so if this object appears twice there is a double summation over local indices that will be contravariant tensor of order two that we are going to see uh, after some time so this thing, this thing is uh, the definition of contravariant uh, tensors and since it's order one, so we will just call it contravariant vector. So order one tensors are uh, vectors, uh, normally called vectors and order zero tensors, they are called scalars and the rest of them, they are just in general tensors. Right, so and uh, there is a an object that is analogous to it that goes in parallel that is what we call as covariant tensor again first I'm going to define order one covariant tensor so still I have two coordinate systems x bar i and xi this one I will treat as old coordinate system this as new coordinate system and uh, I have an object and uh, that object let me use different kind of notation for it so I will denote it by Omega uh, so capital it doesn't matter so notation we can choose anything but let's try to keep things separate at this point so I'm going to call that object Omega so this Omega has its components uh, again I'm just talking about three-dimensional space so it's Omega 1 Omega 2 Omega 3 it has three components over here 
and the relationship so each omega i again i'm going exactly in parallel to this so here ai was function of coordinate system so omega i it's a function of x1 x2 x3 and uh, omega i bar so representation of omega in the new coordinate system that obviously depends on uh, x bar 1 x bar 2 x bar 3 and uh, the relationship between these two is given by this expression that i'm writing over here so omega bar i this is given by omega i and the matrix the terms the partial derivatives involved now are of this type so this i'm going to take as omega j and del x bar j oops so i made a mistake over here so jj are at correct position so this is with i let me put this in a box so if i have an object omega which whose uh, components they interchange under this matrix uh, under this equation over here then we call this object as covariant tensor of order one or simply covariant vector because it has order one order one objects order one tensors they are called vectors in common notation common language so so this is my definition and uh, we should observe the difference between these two things at this point so we see that uh, there has been a switch of uh, these partial derivatives so here it was new with respect to old and this is old with respect to new and uh, so so these objects are inverse of this so so th that is the difference due to which uh, these are different kind of objects and uh, then we have uh, so so these two are types of order one tensors and uh, they are called vectors so there are two different kind of vectors this one is contravariant vector this one is covariant vector and uh, once i co call it vector then i don't need to specify the order order one objects are vectors and uh, if i talk about order zero so there is only one kind of objects they are scalars and then we'll move on to order two vectors or order two tensors So order two tensors and uh, so here three categories are going to arise so let me simply call the object a now so here I have an object a and it will be called uh, uh, it will be called one one tensor one one tensor or a mixed tensor or uh, let me first uh, bring in this object uh, let me take it to zero tensor so this one was uh, order one tensor or we can also write it as one zero tensor and this one is two zero tensor so this this thing over here this number represents how many times this summation is going to take place under these kind of objects so this a so now the relationship changes a bar j a bar i i at component that is going to be so now i will have two indices so let me write them as i j over here and i will choose two local symbols k and l and the partial derivatives because uh, in these kind of objects the partial derivatives involved are new versus old so i'm going to take same objects del x bar with respect to del del x bar with respect to del but uh, one is going to sum up over this local index k so i'm going to take it uh, this one as i with respect to k so this thing this object is going to take uh, it's going to sum up over k and will take this to i and then i have this l so summation is going to take place over l so l and i have j so this thing sums up over l and then it goes to through this j it appears as j on the left side so this is the definition for two zero tensor and uh, it's called two zero 
contravariant tensor because uh, both uh, indices they are appearing at contravariant positions so these up positions are called contravariant because uh, that's what we saw over here and the down positions are called covariant so these are co contravariant tensors contravariant order 2 tensors and similarly we have uh, uh, let me call this object as B so we have 0 2 tensors of order 2 so here so now because it's covariant so the object the indices are going to appear at the bottom and uh, again I'm choosing K and L as my local terms so here uh, partial errors involved are old with respect to new so del x del x bar again summation is taking place over k and since this one k is at the bottom this is going to appear at the top so k k and uh, that one is going to take it to i so this is i and here it's l and this is going to j so two partial derivatives are involved summation is taking over two local indices so this is covariant order two tensor and then we have the last one i'm going to pull it over here so these are mixed tensors so i'm going to call this object as c so these are mixed tensors one one tensor and here uh, the new components c one index is at top one is at bottom that's why it's mixed tensor and uh, i'm going to use kl as local variables again so k and l so let's first talk about this i the uh, top position so top position is controlled by uh, these kind of partial derivatives so partial derivative of a new system with respect to old and uh, since this k is appearing at the top so k here is going to appear at bottom and that is going to take it to i so this is one so this thing is controlling k and is taking it to i and then i have a bottom index l local index so that is going to sum up over this let me try to represent it properly so this is these, these are green positions and uh, this these green partial derivatives are going to do this job uh, del x and with respect to del x bar and since l is appearing over here at the bottom so this one is going to appear at top and this one is going to take it to j so here it is j so this these partial derivatives summation over these partial derivatives is going to take this index to this it's going to sum up it's going to eat up this index and that's going to generate j so these objects obeying this relationship they are called mixed tensors so one is a contravariant position this one is contravariant position this one is covariant position so these are mixed order two tensors and uh, later on we are going to generalize we can talk about any order tensor uh, we can talk about uh, let's say m up positions and n down position then it's going to be called as uh, order m plus one tensor with m covariant positions m contravariant positions and n covariant positions uh, that's we are that we are going to see in next one that's it for now